Hello everyone. Welcome to part 5 of my line following robot making series. In the previous episode, I demonstrated how to implement a PID controller and how to tune it so the robot can follow a straight line smoothly. In this video, I will show you how to detect sharp turns, such as 90, 60, or 30 degree angles, and how to execute and handle these types of turns effectively. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming tutorials. For this LFR series, I'm using my custom-designed PCB, which was printed by JLCPCB. This carrier board includes everything on a single PCB, making the line-following robot easy to build and assemble. You can order this board from us, and when you purchase it, you'll receive an operating system with an OLED display completely free, along with the carrier board. To place an order, simply visit our Instagram, WhatsApp, or Facebook page. Now, let's jump into today's main part. Let's see how to open the code with all its tabs in the Arduino IDE. First, download the zip file of the code from my GitHub repository and unzip it. Make sure the folder name of the unzipped code matches the name of at least one of the tabs inside the files. If the names don't match, the Arduino IDE will not load all the tabs correctly when you open the project. I'm starting exactly where we left off in the last episode. Here, I made some changes to the design of the new board. I need to update the pin configuration in the code. I also added a third button, so I configured that in the program as well. Next, I write code to display the bit sensor value in both decimal and binary so I can observe the sensor patterns for turn detection in the side calibration function. I call this function when button 1 is pressed. After uploading the code and opening the serial monitor, I check the left and right turn detection patterns. Here's how the detection works. When the middle two sensors and the right three sensors detect a line, it indicates a right turn. When the middle two sensors and the left three sensors detect a line, it indicates a left turn. When all the sensors are on the black line, the bit sensor decimal value is 255, and when all sensors are on the white line, the decimal value is zero. These values are important to remember. After summarizing the results, I list the patterns for left turn detection and the patterns for right turn detection, as well as the bit sensor decimal values when all sensors are on black or white. Then I move to the PID controller function. After taking the sensor readings, I use a switch statement to check the bit sensor pattern and detect a turn accordingly. If the sensor pattern matches one of the turn detection patterns, I save the turn value to a variable called direction. I write separate patterns for detecting both left and right turns. After setting up the turn detection and storing the direction value, I add code to display the direction value in the serial monitor along with the bit sensor pattern. I define the variable direction as a string and set its default value to straight. While testing, I comment out the motor drive part to keep the motor's stop mode from running.
In the main loop function, I then call the PID controller function with the necessary arguments, upload the code to the Arduino, and reopen the serial monitor. When I push the robot to the right sideline, the sensor pattern matches the right turn detection logic, and the value stores, right in the direction variable. Similarly, when I move it to the left side of the line, it detects and stores left in the direction variable. Now I'm writing the code to execute turns based on the direction value. After the robot detects a turn, it waits until all the sensors move onto the white surface, which means the bit sensor value becomes zero. When this happens, the robot begins the turning process. It first checks the direction value. If it's not the default straight, it must be either left or right. At that moment, I turn on an LED to indicate that a turn has been detected. Next, I include a short delay so the robot can move slightly forward and create a bit of space before starting the turn. Once this delay ends, the code again checks the actual direction value. If the value indicates right, the robot turns right, and I add the necessary commands to drive it in that direction. If it's not right, then it's definitely left, and I write the corresponding code to handle a left turn. At the start of the program, I define the delay that occurs before a turn begins. Initially, I set this to 50 milliseconds, but it can be adjusted later. I also created a new code tab dedicated to all turn-related functions. In this tab, I define a function named turnRight, which accepts two integer parameters to control the direction and speed of the left and right motors. Inside this function, I use a while loop with a specific condition. The robot drives right by running the left motor forward and the right motor backward while continuously updating the sensor readings. This lets the program break the loop the moment the turn is complete. After the turn finishes, I reset the direction value to the default, straight for normal forward movement. The while loop continues until sensor number 4. The middle sensor detects the black line. As long as sensor 4 reads 0, white surface, the turning remains active. Once it detects the black line, the value changes to 1, which breaks the while loop, and the robot exits the turn execution and resumes straight line movement using PID control. As this particular function is for a right turn, I call it whenever the direction value is right and pass two arguments that set the turn speed. The turn speed determines how fast or slow the robot completes the turn. I define this turn speed at the beginning of the code so it can be adjusted for fine-tuning. Similarly, I create another function for left turn execution, simply reversing the motor directions. and calling it whenever the direction value is left. After each turn is successfully executed, I switch off the LED to signal that the turn is complete. Then I call the hard stop function to completely stop the robot after executing turns. This step is only for testing the turn feature. I create a function named hardstop, where an infinite while loop sends commands to the motor function with a zero PWM value, meaning the robot stops entirely. This while loop never breaks until the Arduino is reset, ensuring the robot remains at a full stop.
Next, in the main loop, I call the PID controller whenever button 2 is pressed. After writing the code, I upload it to the Arduino and test the turn function. As you can see, the robot detects a turn and activates the LED. Then it executes the turn and immediately stops completely after finishing the movement. To better visualize the process, I observe the system in slow motion. After testing, I commented out the hard stop function because I don't want the robot to stop immediately after executing a turn during the final run. During the final run, as soon as the robot detects a turn, the LED lights up, the robot executes the turn perfectly, and then resumes line following using PID control. Let's observe how the delay before turning works. This delay pushes the robot slightly forward to create enough space before the turn begins. If I increase the delay, the robot moves farther forward than before. In slow motion, you can clearly compare the difference between a 50 millisecond and a 100 millisecond delay, and you can adjust this timing yourself to suit your needs. You can also fine-tune the turn speed to achieve smoother motion. Reducing the turn speed makes the robot turn more slowly, while increasing it causes the robot to drift and turn faster. For testing, I adjust the turn speed to show the difference. Observe how a higher turn speed makes the robot drift quickly, whereas a lower value makes it move more steadily. You can easily modify this speed according to your own requirements. That's it for today's part. In the next part, I'll demonstrate how to handle more common scenarios, such as cross lines, T-junctions, and stop points. So, make sure to subscribe to my channel and stay updated for the upcoming episode.